Thanks, Alistair. You'd be very happy again. Just another regulation win Friday night against another top eight contender and um, Leon Davis, a few party tricks as well. Yeah, look, we were pleased to get to uh, get away with a win on Friday night against the Saints. So we thought they played really well and put our boys under some pressure. And yeah, Leon, he, he's having a good season. You can come out now and tell us that it was your decision to move him to halfback. Oh, no, no doubt. Club decision, no, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, Mick, Mick would have thought long and hard about that one. And uh, you know, he sat down with Leon and, and went through a whole heap of things. And, and so far, so good. He, were there, were there, was there anything you had to address along the way? Or did he just instantly take to it like a duck to water? Oh, the, over the summer, he trained with a backline group uh, under, under Scott Waters. And Maxie Hudson comes in a couple of days a week. And, and you know, Mick gave Scott plenty of direction, but, but enough uh, ownership for Scott to put some of his own things into it, and uh, yeah, Leon's grasped that opportunity really well. How quickly did he sort of get back on his feet after the disappointment of missing the grand final replay? Well, by the time training started again up uh, for pre-season, he, he was ready to go. And, yeah. uh, you know, he's, a, he's someone clearly that's been around a long time. And, uh, yeah, he, he trained extremely well over summer, and, uh, you know, he's made every post a winner. There's talk that he may, for family reasons, head back to Adelaide, maybe even retire at the end of the season. You couldn't allow that to happen, could you? Oh, look, I think with Leon at the moment, there's no doubt he's enjoying his footy. And uh, he would have set some things that he wants to achieve this year. And, and I think what we're... No, look, I know what we're doing at the footy club is letting him focus on the remainder of this season to achieve the things that he has set down. And, you know, he'll sit down with Bucks at the completion of our year and, uh, and work next year out. Sounds a little bit different, that, doesn't it? Sit down with Bucks and, and, and not Mick. But, you know, we know what's, uh, what's occurring at Collingwood. But is, is Leon... You've got some great kicks at Collingwood. Alan Didak and, you know, those type of players and terrific kicks. But is Leon the best kick at Collingwood? Oh, I don't know here, rate, you know, the, the top... He's certainly in the top few, Brad. And, you know, when you're playing well and your confidence, confidence is up, someone like Leon, yeah, he's going to use the footy really well. And he does that uh, on a regular basis. Well, it's just so important these days, isn't it? Having that, that person off half-back who can distribute yeah. the ball and mm. really set up a lot of your, of your four race forward. And we know Collingwood would have got such a great defence, but it's just that extra dimension that perhaps they didn't have last year that Leon's provided. I think it's been a great move. Oh, absolutely. been an incredible player down back. Speaking about one of your players, your captain, Nick Maxwell, he's uh, injured and looks like he's going to be out for uh, three or four weeks. Um, that would be that's a blow to your structure, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. You know, no no team uh, likes to not be playing without their captain. Uh, he had surgery a couple of days ago, and by reports that went really well. And now he's just got to get straight into the rehab and get back as quickly as what he possibly can. Some people are starting to say, is he in the best 22? I mean, we've seen uh, people like Mike Brearley, captain test size, because they're fantastic captains, not necessarily brilliant players. Does he fill that sort of mould? Oh, in terms of being a brilliant captain, absolutely. Uh, you know, he's a premiership captain and, and he leads really, really well. In terms of, you know, Nick being in our best 22, well, those comments, are ten they're always made by people out, oh, outside absolutely. of the club and, yep. and they don't understand the roles that we give. But, you know, if Nick Maxwell is fit, you know, I'd have him in our best 22. Well, there's the 22 we came up with and we've got Nick Maxwell there on the back flank. But Players like Tyson Goldsack have been putting enormous pressure on and, and there's great competition for spots, isn't there? Yeah, no doubt there is and you know, we've been really open about the fact that we want a group of approximately 30 players ready to go come finals time that you know, if they're needed to play they'll be, they'll be good to go. So he's expected to miss three, four weeks, does he come straight back in? Does that oh. coincide with Heath Shaw's return approximately as well? Again, that's crystal ball gazing and, you know, the, the person there. There'll be a few people that'll have uh, their say in that, no doubt that the coaching group will and the sports science guys, but, but at the end of the day, I'm sure Maxie will sit down with Mick and they'll work that one out if he's right to go. What's your crystal ball telling you? Uh, that, that's exactly how it'll play out. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the, the thing is with the best 22, there's no point even talking about it because Collingwood are approaching it the right way. You need your best 30 and your best 22 is going to be the best 22 that are available yep. for that particular week. So as a coaching staff, you put together the, you, about that 30 players and you know if you've got a really solid 30, you're going to be able to pick a pretty good best 22. So that's for us to do on this show, pick the best 22. Mm -hmm. Collingwood wouldn't worry about that. They worry about their best 22 for this week. And when Maxwell's back, they'll address it then. There's plenty of pressure up for spots. I mean, you've been able to show us uh, some uh, exciting young players coming into the team in recent weeks, or this year, Fasolo has come in and played a fantastic role. You've done it for years, actually. I mean, Keith came in and played at centre-half back. Are there any other players that we haven't seen as yet that um, may be a chance to debut in the next month? Yeah, possibly. We've got a few. Uh, we've got a young boy, Ben Sinclair, who's already debuted, but he debuted as the sub. Uh, you know, he's had some strong 
strong performances in the VFL since he's gone back. A uh, young fella off the New South Wales scholarship list called Thomas Young. Uh, another young fella, Josh Thomas. They're the ones that are coming to mind at the moment that are playing consistently well in the VFL and, and haven't had a, an opportunity at AFL level yet. The New South Wales scholarship system is a, is a unique one to New South Wales, obviously, and gets the opportunity to get uh, Sydney boys down to your club, and I know Brisbane have a couple of players as well. Jared Witts, tell us about him, apparently a very good athlete. Yeah, good athlete, very hard to miss. He's 18 years of age and stands at 207 <coughs> centimetres, so when oh. he's around the place you know he's there. Uh, look, don't want to put too much pressure on, a, on an 18-year-old, but he, he played in our VFL team over the last couple of weeks and, and has done a really good job. He's a terrific character. He's, he's fitted in really well with the group. Uh, he's got a, a personal player mentor, if you like, in Lee Brown, and, and he's doing a really good job to try and get him into the group. And, yeah, he, he is a good athlete. He moves around really well. So is he from an AFL background, or is one of those rookie search schemes that uh, we spoke about a few weeks ago from Queensland that, uh, from another sport, you've just found a great athlete and you're going to teach him how to play AFL footy? Well, I don't know the full background in yeah. how Derek Hine, our recruiting manager, got a hold of him, but I do know over the past 18 months he hasn't played a lot of footy. I think it's in the yeah. vicinity of about 10 to 12 games. That's all he's played over that 18-month period. And so there's clearly a lot, you know, a lot of upside is the yeah. buzzword you're supposed to use, and there's a lot of that in him. A lot of reasonable judges are suggesting he is going to be the next big thing as far as Ruckman goes, so competition to be excited that uh, Collingwood's going to pick up another gun. Just Ruckman. put a bit of pressure on the young yeah. kid, Jase. Awesome. Uh, Collingwood <laughs> just keep getting stronger and stronger. That's the issue. I want to ask you about Alan Didak. It's it probably been a tough year for him. He's had uh, a number of injury issues along the way and perhaps hasn't seen his best form. Is there a role for him in that super sub role? Because he certainly can be an impact player. Oh, look, oh, Alan, Alan Didak is a quality footballer, we know that, and, and you've said the difficulties he had. He had a, an interrupted pre-season and sometimes that can hurt, and then he came back and he regained his spot straight away. He's had a soft tissue injury, he's been out for a little while, and, and we just felt with Alan we wanted to get him back into the AFL team as quickly as what we possibly yep. could. And coming off, you know, he played over in uh, Port Adelaide, we had a six-day break, it was in the wet. Uh, coming out, playing on Eddie Had, we just felt the way to go was to get him in as the, as the sub on both occasions. So how far off full fitness? Uh, hopefully not too far away. Is his left shoulder an issue? Seems heavily taped for a guy that hasn't been back long. No, I, well, that's something that he had uh, an issue with over pre-season. But, you yeah. know, I, look, I, again, I don't know the ins and outs of his injury, but I, he tackles at training and he tackles during the game and it doesn't appear to so, be a problem. So is that the, the pectoral that he, that he played with in the grand final last year, is that still a remnants from that surgery, is it? Yeah, I just think it's there from a, a precautionary oh. uh, thing to he needs to look after his shoulder but one thing that as an opposition coach you'd be you look at that sub and it's a it's a new role and but it's a critical role yep. all the same you look at players who are going to have a significant impact when they come on when the heat's gone out of the game fatigue set in as an opposition coach if you saw alan didak there as a sub you'd be worried mm. because at some point you know he's going to come in yep. players are going to be fatigued and he's going to, have an, going to have an impact so I think he's a, a real weapon that Collingwood have got up their sleeve. The, another weapon is obviously the pre-season training in Arizona. We've seen players go mid-year. Heath Shaw, is he still there at the moment? Uh, yes, he is. Can you actually link back the fact that Collingwood's final quarters, and if we look at their quarter-by-quarter -quarter performances, you'll see that their output in the fourth quarter is ex exceptional. Uh, you're looking at the points difference. That's the fourth term as opposed to the others. The rest Can of it's you... not too bad either. Well, the rest of it's very good, Scotty. <laughs> The fourth quarter is damn unbelievable, isn't it? <laughs> Do you sit there and say, well, we know there's only um, limited benefit you get from the altitude training and it has a, a, a period of time that it works for, but that allows you to get a bit of base fitness perhaps that will see you throughout the course of the season. Is that how you trace it back? Yeah, look, you can. it's very hard to trace back just one particular mm. component, but obviously at the club we're uh, huge supporters of training at altitude and been doing it for a long time and we have the altitude room at, at yep. uh, the club and we use that, uh, the players use it every week and yeah, look, you know, we're strong supporters of it and I'm sure that's going to continue in the future. Looked like there was going to be a bit of a hole in your back line with Nathan Brown going down with his, uh, I think it was knee injury, but uh, Ben Reid, he's just slotted into that role beautifully and I mean, uh, obviously a talented uh, youngster and a high draft pick, but uh, he must be very close to uh, an All-Australian and half-back. Hard for me to comment on the selection of the All-Australian team. but I oh, will do that. Yeah, yeah, Randy's close. Yeah, good. I'll leave you to that one. But in terms of his development, yeah, it's been fantastic. And uh, another high draft pick, as you said, drafted primarily as a forward and has been able to go back and uh, develop into a, a really strong key position player who not only has the ability to nullif nullify his opponent but uh, use the footy as well. Now, we know you're not going to say anything negative about the opposition, but True. when you look at them, what's impressed you about some of the major threats? 
Oh, look, Geelong have had a, an, an outstanding season. You know the way that they've been able to get a new coach in and slightly modify their game plan, but you know keep keep winning. They've introduced some young players. They're yep. going really well. He, yeah, Carl, Carlton, we know that you know there and thereabouts have got a terrific midfield. The way that Hawthorne's been able to deal with uh, their injuries and introduce new players and continue to win. Uh, I saw you highlight West Coast before and the way that they've gone about it. And you know we're still at the stage. We've got three games to go and. You know, I think there's 11 sides that can still make the eight, so there's some there's mm. some good sides out there in good form. One of the <laughs> tactics that we see in the game, nearly third man up at the ruck contest, is very popular with some teams, not at Collingwood, but certainly Geelong and Hawthorne are doing it. Also, St Kilda at the top of the tree. You can see Collingwood, in fact, is right down the very bottom. And I guess uh, you know there's different ways of approaching it, but some teams think it's the best way to upset the midfield structure of other sides. Collingwood just. You just back your structure wherever it is. Yeah, we do, and, and you're right. It depends on your philosophy. Uh, clearly, if you're going to go third up, you're going to have two guys in the air, so they're going, to, they're going to back it in that two in the air, V1 in the air is the way to go. Uh, you know, that, that's terrific, but they just need to make sure that they hit it to the right spot, because if they don't, uh, the opposition has one extra on the ground. It's interesting that, but it's obviously worked for two of the teams up near the top ladder in Geelong and Hawthorne. It's obviously been very effective. Yeah, absolutely. But again, you know, we talk about the way that we do things is different, and uh, for the moment, we <laughs> I saw that graph there. We don't use it all that often. Uh, perhaps it's something we need to look at. Well, Neil, you, would that change if Darren Jolly and even Cameron Wood were out injured? You know, if, if you had to go into a game with just Lee Brown, for example, and, and maybe another pinch-hitting ruckman to back him up, would that change midfield structure in terms of third man up? It might do, but it just depends, I suppose. We would probably uh, go with our structure initially, and then we'd have a look and call it on the night or the day. You know, if things weren't going our way, perhaps that's something that we'd look at. And then, clearly, very quickly, you've got to identify the type of player that can do it. Well, we might have a look at that graphic again, because I think one of the, the key things to look oh, at there is... Oh, the Collingwood, research, yeah. Well, Collingwood at 17th. I mean, if, if you had Darren Jolly in the ruck, rucking for you every week, well, why go third man up? In fact, you'd probably try and avoid it and try and stop the opposition from doing it. You know, Jason, you might be better off uh, commenting on Hawthorne, but Hawthorne go third up a lot. Ben McAvoy's been terrific for St Kilda. Geelong do it quite a bit as well. But, you know, Fremantle is a surprising one, because when Sanderland is playing, they never go third up. When he's not there, they always go third yeah. up. So it, it distinctly changes depending on personnel. And I would suggest that Darren Jolly's in such good form that when he's in the ruck, you don't want to go third up. Just let him hit it there. Tell you what, you're in good form too. He's <laughs> calling for graphics to come back up, yeah. Leachy. Was, no, I'm loving it. He was in early today too, wasn't he? A bit of extra research. That's what happens yeah. when you're a senior coach. And, and this is something that yes. could happen to uh, the man sitting alongside us, Leachy. Now, Neil, there's a couple of gigs up for grabs. And uh, last year when we had you on, I said you applied for the Geelong job because my researcher had no idea and <laughs> just gave me a bum steer. Um, now, you've declared your hands. You're keen to go for the Adelaide Crows job? Surely oh, my research is right this time. Yeah, I don't know about declaring my hand. Look, what my role at the moment is to focus purely on what's going on at Collingwood and yeah. make sure that that's working well. And uh, look, I tend to think things like that will sort themselves out over time. So we all know that, but you'd like to coach? <laughs> <laughs> oh, ab absolutely. Given the opportunity, yes, but at the moment I've got to make sure that I'm looking after my day job, so to speak. If you looked at Adelaide's Very list nice. and also Melbourne's list, how would you compare the two? Uh, they're, they're different, uh, no doubt. Uh, you know, the Melbourne list is uh, it's full of, you know, lots of raw talent, if you like, uh, coached differently. If you look at the Adelaide list and, and having you know, played them earlier in the year, and we tend to look at everyone's list, and you know, they're very structure orientated, so there's no doubt that they've been coached, but in a slightly different manner. But uh, yeah, they're, they're not too dissimilar in terms of talent, I wouldn't have thought. Just before we let you go, round 24. Round Is it 24. going to be full on or are there going to be some games played? Oh, I'm not sure. We haven't discussed round 24 yet. We're just looking forward to playing. <laughs> oh, no. It could be a very, uh, very good game. Brisbane Lions on Saturday no. night. <laughs> one, one more. Right if you don't get the chip. Melbourne job and the Crows job, what do you do? Well, same deal. I'm going to sort out the Collingwood midfield over the next few weeks and then at the end of that I'll sit down with Nathan and uh, we'll go over a few things and I'm sure we'll work something out. Beautiful. Played us beautifully with a straight bat. <laughs> uh, Neely, thanks for your time, mate, and good luck for the rest of the season. And I don't think it'll be too long before we see you in one of the top jobs. Oh, thanks, guys.